Hello everyone, so today in this video I'm going to show you the steps to follow to assign hybridization to carbon atoms or to heteroatoms in organic molecules. So before we get into the specific steps to do this, I wanted to remind you guys of a, a couple of things. So here we have the valence shell of, of the second row elements of the periodic table that includes obviously carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen. And the valence shell for this atom has one orbital to S and three to P orbitals for a total of four orbitals. That's the reason why atoms being in the second row of the periodic table can only form a maximum of four bonds. The second thing that I wanted to show you before we start discussing this is the definition of a sigma and the definition of a pi bond. Remember, a sigma bond refers to direct overlapping of atomic or hybrid orbitals, which is what I'm showing here on the slide. So this is the definition of a sigma bond, and a pi bond is a different thing. So the pi bond is the side-by-side -side overlapping of pure p orbitals, okay? So I'm going to write here pi bond. And remember, guys, this is very important. So pi bonds, side-by-side -side overlappings of pure p orbitals, whereas the sigma bonds is the direct overlappings of atomic or hybrid orbitals. With that definition, then we can start then defining the steps that we are going to follow to assign hybridization to organic molecules. And the number one thing to look at is going to be the number of pi bonds. So the number of pi bonds will allow us to easily assign hybridization to atoms in organic molecules. The first case that we can find often is atoms with no pi bonds. So when we have atoms with no pi bonds, let's say for example for carbon or even for oxygen or nitrogen, it means that all the four orbitals in the valence cell will be used for sigma bonds. So according to hybridization, any of these atoms will hybridize its four atomic orbitals to form how many? four hybrid orbitals. Therefore, if we are combining 1s and 3p, we get an sp3 hybridized orbital. Okay, so sp3 hybridization uh, is a geometry tetrahedral structure. That's also very important to keep in mind. And the bone angle which is expected is 109.5 degrees. Okay, so once again, where or how can we identify sp3 hybridized orbitals? sp3 hybridized atoms, I'm sorry. So sp3 hybridized atoms are atoms having no pi bonds, meaning they will all have four single bonds. For carbons, obviously. If we think about nitrogen, or oxygen, so we are talking about uh, sigma bonds and lone pairs, okay, but no pi bonds. So I'm going to clarify four single bonds for carbon. So I'm going to throw here an example of that. So this could be all sp3 hybridized atoms, right? So we have how many carbons do we have in this molecule? One, two, three, four, five, all of them has just uh, single bonds. Therefore, every carbon atom in this organic molecule is sp3 hybridized, okay? So if we think about now uh, another molecule like this where we add a functional group, let's say, for example, hydroxyl functional group. We have to complete the long pairs for hydroxyl. And once again, if we assign hybridization to the atoms in this molecule here, we think how many pi bonds do we see in any carbon atom here? No pi bonds, they are all sp3. What about the oxygen? The oxygen atom has no pi bonds whatsoever, so it's also sp3 hybridized. The second situation that we can find is one pi bond. So atoms in organic molecules having one pi bond. If there is one pi bond, it means that one of the p orbitals in the valence cell of this atom will be used for that pi bond. Therefore, there will be only three atomic orbitals 
available to be hybridized and the resulting hybridization will be sp2 okay so atom with one pi bond will be using one p orbital for the pi bond and they will have three sp2 hybridized orbitals okay so once again one pi bond sp2 <clears throat> and one pure uh, one pure p orbital for the pi bond so what is the geometry expected for an sp2 hybridized atom so the geometry for an sp2 hybridized atom is three on a planar meaning that the molecule is flat and the expected bone angle is 120 degrees okay so i'll give you an example now of a simple uh, sp2 hybridized uh, atom so let's say um, something like this so let's so this is a carbonyl functional group first thing once again we complete the Lewis structures two lone pairs to be added in the oxygen so if we look at these molecules this uh, carbon over here this carbon over here and this carbon over here all of the three of them has no pi bonds they have all single bonds so they are all sp3 hybridized now the carbon function of the group is different if we look at the carbon here we have one carbon atom having one pi bond and we have one oxygen atom having also one pi bond so because there is one pi bond in this carbon this carbon will, will be sp2 and because it is pi bond on the oxygen that oxygen will also be sp2 okay so that's the criteria to assign hybridization for sp2 you just need to find one pi bond in the atom remember something that quickly i want to remind you all uh, is that uh, when you have sp2 hybridized atoms once again that atom has three sp2 hybrid orbitals and one pure p orbital for the pi bond okay so for example something that is very challenging for the students this oxygen here is sp2 hybridized meaning that it has a one p orbital for the pi bond and it also has three sp2 hybrid orbitals one of these sp2 hybrid orbitals is used for this sigma bond and the other two sp2 hybrid orbitals contain the lone pairs okay keep that in mind that's very important for later on understanding resonance theory um third scenario could be atoms having two pi bonds so if you have two pi bonds obviously you would need to have that atom will need to use two p orbitals of its valence shell for these two pi bonds only two atomic orbitals for hybridization are remaining so the resulting hybridization here will be sp so we'll have uh, two p orbitals when you have two pi bonds obviously two p orbitals will be used for those pi bonds and therefore one s and one p will combine to lead leading to two sp hybridized orbitals okay so any atom with two pi bonds will be sp hybridized and that atom will have two sp hybrid orbitals around it and two p orbitals for the two pi bonds the geometry of a sp hybridized atom is linear and the spectrum bone angle is 180 okay so that's how you assign hybridization based on pi bonds i'm going to give you a quick example here of an sp uh, hybridized carbon for example so you have a molecule like this an alkyne these two carbons here on the triple bonds remember when triple bonds two bonds are pi and one is sigma so these two carbon atoms here 
will be obviously sp hybridizing. They both have two pi bonds, and the one on the uh, right end, this carbon will be now sp3 hybridized, since this carbon has no pi bonds whatsoever. Okay, so according to the number of pi bonds, this is how you will assign hybridization to atoms in organic molecules. Now, this is not the only situation that you will find in molecules. So there is another criteria that you also must take into account by the time you're assigning hybridization to organic molecules, which is atoms with lone pairs next to sp2 atoms will also be sp2 hybridized. And this, guys, is super important. It's overlooked in many organic uh, uh, textbooks. Uh, it's not explicitly explained. Um, what do I mean by that? So let me give you an example uh, right away. So let's say we have a molecule like this. Okay. I'm going to add here now hydroxyl function group. So this is a carboxylic acid. Let's complete the Lewis structure of this. Okay. So according to the number of pi bonds, uh, if we assign hybridization on this molecule, so the simplest could be to say this carbon is sp3 and this carbon is sp3, right? They have no pi bonds, four sigma bonds, so they are all sp3 hybridized. So that, that's no brainer, easy to assign. Now the second uh, carb, the next carbon is also easy. This carbon has a pi bond, and this oxygen also has a pi bond. So atoms having one pi bond, we also know that it's easy to assign according to our definition, sp2 hybridization. So one pi bond is using one p orbital for that pi bond. Therefore, three orbitals must be hybridized. That's sp2 hybridization. But then finally, what about this oxygen atom? So this oxygen atom has no obvious pi bond. So according to the definition explained here, the hybridization that you would be assigning is sp3. However, it's not. This oxygen is also sp2 hybridized. So how do you identify this? Because once again, this is an atom, an oxygen atom which has a long period, and it's next to an sp2 hybridized carbon. So any hetero atom having lone pairs, guys, which is next to an sp2 hybridized atom, in this case it's a carbon, will also be sp2 hybridized. Very important to keep in mind. Okay? And finally, I'm going to give you the last section that you can find, and that refers to carbocations. Carbocations, you're going to be using carbocations all the time in organic chemistry. Okay, so what's a carbocation? It's a carbon with a plus one charge, right? So the formal charge of, of carbon, I'm going to say carbon plus one. That's a carbocation. I'm going to give you an example here, okay, quickly. So let's say we have carbocation here. And I'm going to also add another atom in this molecule so you can practice what we just learned. And let's add now the Lewis structure of this. Okay, so if we assign hybridization to every atom in this ion here, so we will say obviously uh, the carbons on both ends will be sp3 hybridized. That's easy to study because this carbon and this carbon they have all single bonds, they do not have any pi bonds. And as we know, there is no lone pairs on carbons, therefore they are sp3 hybridized. Now if we look at this carbon over here, that's a carbocation, okay? So carbocation is a carbon with three bonds. And I'm going to draw it over here so you can see it better. So three bonds and a plus one charge, that's a carbocation. Guys, carbocations are always always sp2 hybridized meaning that carbocations have three sigma bonds and they have an empty p orbital perpendicular to the plane of the carbocation so the hybridization 
for any carbocation will always be sp2 and you gotta keep that in mind very important once again sp2 hybridized three sp2 hybrid orbitals for three sigma bonds one p orbital perpendicular to the plane of the molecule so we assign hybridization of sp2 to this carbon because it's a carbocation and guys the moment we know that this carbon is sp2 because it's a carbocation now we can assign hybridization to the oxygen next to it okay and as we just learned this oxygen is an heteroatom having lone pairs next to an sp2 hybridized carbon therefore this oxygen will also be sp2 hybridized okay so with that in mind then you should be able to quickly and correctly assign hybridization to any atom in any organic molecule by following these steps by uh, looking at the number of pi bonds looking at the atoms with lone pairs next to sp2 hybridized atoms and making sure that if you have carbocations you know that they are sp2 hybridized so thank you and i hope this was helpful for you